I want to talk about football, not in the way you may expect, because I like to watch football. I am not a, an expert in football. I don't do fantasy football. Here's my claim to fame. The only time I ever did a fantasy football league, the only time I participated in fantasy football, I won. Because my buddy Russ Vote, who is now the uh, head of the Center for American Renewal, and he was the uh, OMB director for Donald Trump, uh, Russ is a dear friend of mine, and Russ convinced me to uh, that I should do the Fantasy Football League and not to worry that he would pick my players for me. Well, he picked the players for me, and I won. And he didn't intend that, but I won. I am not. I like to watch a game. I can't tell you what's going on. I try to explain the game to my kid. I'm like, we need to get your mom out here. She knows more than me when it comes to football. I grew up in the desert. I We did camel racing, and we had soccer. We didn't have football. I mean, we had football, but it was soccer. Nonetheless, I watched that game last night between the Steelers and the Browns, and it was horrible. You could hear what happened to Nick Chubb. I mean, they're, they're talking about it, and in the background, you're, oh, oh. I mean, like, turn the microphone off. I don't need to hear this guy. He's, like, shattered his knee. It was horrible. And so they showed the replay in the stadium. And you're listening to the crowd in the background. You're listening to the commentators. You don't see the big screen where they're replaying this. And the entire crowd goes, <gasps> it was awful. It was gut-wrenching. It makes you want to hurl just thinking about it. And you could hear the guy in the background just, oh, it was horrible. I'm glad ABC didn't do that replay. While it was going on, the Saints were playing as well. And I'm from Louisiana. I like the Saints. Uh, but I, I also like the Steelers, and that was the Monday night football game for me. I didn't watch ESPN, although I've started watching the Manning cast on ESPN2 where Peyton and Eli talk to each other through the game, which is it's it's a fun show to watch. However, there's actually a larger point than me talking about football, of which I, I enjoy watching the games, but I'm largely ignorant of it. Um, and it's the experience. ABC, because of the strike in Hollywood. Did y'all realize there's a strike going on? This is notable to me. So the UAW has been striking for like five days, and there's absolute economic panic inside Washington, D.C. Hollywood actually produces more in the American economy than the UAW does and, and the big three automakers do. The big three automakers' percentage of economic output to the American economy is less than Hollywood's, and there's nobody in Washington who cares that the writers and the actors are striking in Hollywood, which should tell you everything about all of this. The problem is in a state like mine in Georgia that has a massive film industry, it's starting to have economic ramifications because nobody's making TV shows, nobody's making Netflix series, nobody's making movies right now because everybody's on strike. ABC is going to be showing more Monday night football games than originally planned because of the strike. They don't have new content. They're start, streaming outlets are starting to cancel shows. And the TV uh, networks are starting to say, if, if we can't get this resolved in the next two weeks, we got to cancel the TV season, which is going to be devastating because we're in this transition from cable to streaming services. But we're starting to see where this is shaping up. For example, last night I watched the ABC game on YouTube TV. I've got DirecTV. I can't tell you the last time I actually turned on DirecTV at my house. The reason I have DirecTV is that if I'm here at my office and I want to watch something, I have an Apple TV and I've got the apps for all the TV networks. And if I put in my DirecTV password, I can I can stream it. So if I'm at the office and there's breaking news, I can pull up CNN on my laptop. I use my DirecTV login, and I can see it. The problem for the big cable operators, like Charter, of course, is, is in a fight with Disney, is there's clearly a transition happening. And the cable networks are starting to realize, you know, we can just provide the Internet and let another company come forward and provide the cable TV package. Disney's looking at the thing and saying, you know, uh, I don't have to put my shows on cable. I can make people get a Disney Plus subscription. The problem is once you get the Disney Plus subscription, you get ESPN, you get Hulu, all part of Disney, and then you add in Netflix, and then you add in Apple TV Plus, and then you add in Paramount and Peacock and um, Amazon Prime, and you name the streaming services. 
at some point you're paying as much or more than you were for your cable package. So now you have groups like FUBU and Sling with Dish Network and YouTube TV. They're producing a cable TV package where you get the channels. So I had FUBU, which has a lot of international sports, but it didn't have all the news programs that I liked. So now I've got YouTube TV, which has the NFL Sunday football package, so I can watch every Sunday football game on the NFL, uh, even in, in blackout markets for cable. But then that presents another problem that people are coming to terms with. And the Wall Street Journal has a big story out yesterday I didn't get to about how Americans are deeply frustrated at this moment because the streaming services for sports suck. You got to have multiple packages. You don't know where to watch the game. Half the time you can't watch the game. The games are blacked out. But if you buy the streaming t- cable service like YouTube TV, you can see the game. If you look at, if you get just a standard like package for ESPN or Bally Sports, you might not be able to see the game. Nobody knows where to go to see their favorite team. This is not it, y'all. This, this is not it. We are making life too complicated, particularly when a very large number of Americans still have cable TV. A, a, tens of millions of Americans are not ready for streaming yet. The people who have streaming don't like what's being offered. The people who don't have it don't want to transition. None of them can watch their favorite games anymore, their favorite teams anymore. Uh, the cable providers and the sports companies and the streaming services have screwed up sports. The thing that built cable TV can't build a streaming service if nobody knows where to go to get their favorite game. And all the streaming services, Disney in particular, thought if we offer compelling sports on ESPN, we'll be able to reign supreme, except nobody can figure out where to get the game. And then you buy the package and you can't see the game because it's blocked. It's garbage. More people watched Nick Chubb destroy his knee last night on cable TV than on streaming services. And for sports and news, that's the way it's going to be for still a little bit longer. And Disney just seems to be screwing everything up the way it wants to transition ESPN, and nobody is happy. I am not a massive sports fan, but I enjoy watching football games with my friends on the front porch on Sunday, and that's on NBC, Sunday Night Football. And we're not going to see these streaming services be able to compete. We are like, everything sucks for consumers right now when it comes to watching live sports on TV. Nothing is good. And people are starting to get very aggravated about it. And it just seems like there's another company could come along and offer something competing to YouTube TV and FUBU and do better. Maybe Apple or somebody. There's got to be a future out there that disconnects the cable provider from being the internet provider, from being the provider of sports. But we ain't there. It's very difficult right now to try to enjoy TV, and that should tell everybody something. But what's even more notable is that even as we're enjoying TV and and we're enjoying streaming packages and we're enjoying sports as best we can, nobody cares that Hollywood is striking, and that should tell everybody in Hollywood something about how the rest of us view them.